Genesis chapters 19 through 21. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and you shall rise up early, and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him, and entered into his house. He made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they laid down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. They called unto Lot, and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. And Lot went out at the door unto them, and shut the door after him. And he said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold now, I have two daughters, which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. And they said, Stand back. And they said again, This one fellow came in to sojourn, and he will needs be to judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them? And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand, and pulled Lot into the house to them, and shut the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides son-in-law, and thy sons, and thy daughters? And whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. For we will destroy this place, because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. And Lot went out, and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy the city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto them, and they brought him forth, and set him without the city. And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life, look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain, escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto them, O not so, my lord, behold now, thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life, and I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me and I die. Behold now, this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing, that I will not overthrow this city, which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou be come thither. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities, and all the plain, and all the inhabitants of those cities, and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. And Abraham got up early in the morning to a place where he stood before the Lord. And he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah, and toward all the land of the plain, and beheld, and lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. And it came to pass, when God destroyed the cities of the plain, that God remembered Abraham, and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrew, which he overthrew the cities in which Lot dwelt. And Lot went up out of Zoar, and dwelt on the mountain, and his two daughters with him. For he feared to dwell in Zoar, and he dwelt in a cave, he and his two daughters. And the firstborn said unto the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man in the earth to come in unto us after the manner of all the earth. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, that we may preserve the seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night. And the firstborn went in and lay with her father, and he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. And it came to pass on the morrow that the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I lay yesternight with my father. Let us make him drink wine this night also, and go thou in and lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night also. And the younger arose and lay with him, 
and he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. Thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. And the firstborn bare a son, and called his name Moab, the same as the father of the Moabites unto this day. And the younger, she also bare a son, and called his name Benami, the same as the father of the children of Ammon until this day. And Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country, and dwelled between Kadesh and Shur, and sojourned in Gerar. And Abraham said of Sarah his wife, She is my sister. And Abimelech king of Gerar sent, and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night, and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man for the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. But Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Lord, wilt thou slay also a righteous nation? Said he not unto me, She is my sister? And she, even she herself, said, He is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands have I done this. And God said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou didst this in integrity of thy heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore, suffer I thee not to touch her. Now therefore, restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. Therefore Abimelech rose early in the morning, and called all his servants, and told all these things in their ears. And the men were sore afraid. Then Abimelech called Abraham, and said unto him, What hast thou done unto us? And what have I offended thee, that thou hast brought on me, and on my kingdom, a great sin? Thou hast done deeds unto me, that ought not to be done. And Abimelech said unto Abraham, What sawest thou, that thou hast done this thing? And Abraham said, Because I thought, Surely the fear of God is not in this place, and they will slay me for my wife's sake. And yet indeed she is my sister, she is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother, and she became my wife. And it came to pass, when God caused me to wander from my father's house, that I said unto her, This is thy kindness which thou shalt show unto me, at every place whither we shall come. Say of me, he is my brother. And Abimelech took sheep and oxen and men servants and women servants, and gave them unto Abraham, and restored him Sarah his wife. And Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before thee, dwell where it pleaseth thee. And to Sarah he said, Behold, I have given thy brother a thousand pieces of silver. Behold, he is to thee a covering of the eyes, unto all that are with thee, and with all other. Thus she was reproved. So Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech, and his wife, and his maidservants, and they bare children. For the Lord had fast closed up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech, because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. And the Lord visited Sarah, as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, God hath made me to laugh, so that all that hear will laugh with me. And she said, Who would have said unto Abraham, that Sarah should have given children suck, for I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned. Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abraham, mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad, and because of thy bondwoman, and all that Sarah has said unto thee. Hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And also of the son of the bondwoman will I make a nation, because he is thy seed. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and took bread and a bottle of water, and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder, and the child, and sent her away. And she departed, and watered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was spent in the bottle, and she cast a child under one of the shrubs. And she went, and set her down over against him a good way off, as it were a bowshot. For she said, Let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him, and lifted up her voice, and wept.
And God heard the voice of the lad. And the angel of the Lord called to Hagar out of heaven, and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him in thine hand, for I will make him a great nation. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the bottle with water, and gave the lad drink. And God was with the lad, and he grew, and dwelt in the wilderness, and became an archer. And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran. And his mother took him a wife out of the land of Egypt. And it came to pass at that time that Abimelech and Phicol, the chief captain of his host, spake unto Abraham, saying, God is with thee in all that thou doest. Now therefore swear unto me here by God that thou wilt not deal falsely with me, nor with my son, nor with my son's son, but according to the kindness that I have done unto thee, thou shalt do unto me, and to the land wherein thou hast sojourned. And Abraham said, I will swear. And Abraham reproved Abimelech because of a well of water, which Abimelech's servants had violently taken away. And Abimelech said, I wot not who hath done this thing, neither didst thou tell me, neither yet heard I of it but today. And Abraham took sheep and oxen, and gave them unto Abimelech, and both of them made a covenant. And Abraham set seven ewe lambs of the flock by themselves. And Abimelech said unto Abraham, What mean these seven ewe lambs which thou hast set by themselves? And he said, For these seven ewe lambs shalt thou take of my hand, that they may be a witness unto me, that I have digged this well. Wherefore he called that place Beersheba, because there they swear both of them. Thus they made a covenant at Beersheba. Then Abimelech rose up, and Phicol, the chief captain of his host, and they returned into the land of the Philistines. And Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba, and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. And Abraham sojourned in the Philistines' land many days. Psalm 8 To the chief musician upon Gittith, a psalm of David. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who hast set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Proverbs chapter 1, verses 25-29 through 29. But ye have set at naught all my counsel, and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, and they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge, and did not choose the fear of the Lord. First Esdras, chapter 6. Now in the second year of the reign of Darius, Agius and Zacharias, the son of Addo, the prophets, prophesied unto the Jews in Jewry and Jerusalem in the name of the Lord God of Israel, which was upon them. Then stood up Zorobabel, the son of Salathiel, and Jesus, the son of Josedek, and began to build the house of the Lord in Jerusalem, the prophets of the Lord being with them and helping them. At the same time came unto them Sisanes, the governor of Syria and Phenice, and Sassarabuzanes and his companions, and said unto them, by whose appointment do ye build this house and this roof, and perform all the other things? And who are the workmen that perform these things? Nevertheless, the elders of Jews obtained favor, because the Lord had visited the captivity. And they were not hindered from building, until such time as signification was given unto Darius concerning them, and an answer received. The copy of the letters which Sisanes, the governor of Syria and Phenice, and Sathrabuzanes, and their companions, rulers in Syria and Phenice, wrote and sent unto Darius. To King Darius, greeting. Let all things be known unto our Lord the King, that being come into the country of Judea, and entered into the city of Jerusalem, we found in the city of Jerusalem the ancients of the Jews that were of the captivity, building a house unto the Lord, great and new, of hewn and costly stones, and the timber already laid upon the walls. And those works are done with great speed, and the work goeth um, prosperously in their hands and with all glory and diligence is it made. 
Then we asked these elders, saying, By whose commandment build you this house, and lay the foundations of these works? Therefore, to the intent that we might give knowledge unto thee by writing, we demanded of them who are the chief doers, and we required of them the names in writing of their principal men. So they gave us this answer. We are servants of the Lord which made heaven and earth. And as for this house, it was built many years ago by a king of Israel, great and strong, and was finished. But when our fathers provoked God unto wrath, and sinned against the Lord of Israel, which is in heaven, he gave them over into the power of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, of the Chaldees, who pulled down the house and burned it, and carried away the people captives unto Babylon. But in the first year that King Cyrus reigned over the country of Babylon, Cyrus the king wrote to build up this house. And the holy vessels of gold and silver that Nebuchadnezzar had carried away out of the house at Jerusalem, and set them in his own temple, those Cyrus the king brought forth again out of the temple at Babylon. They were delivered to Zorobabel and to Sanabasarus the ruler, with commandment that he should carry away the same vessels and put them in the temple at Jerusalem, and the temple of the Lord should be built in his place. Then the same Sanabasarus, being come hither, laid the foundations of the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, and from that time to this being still a building, it is not fully ended. Now therefore, if it seem good unto the king, let search be made among the records of King Cyrus. And if it be found that the building of the house of the Lord at Jerusalem hath been done with the consent of King Cyrus, and if our Lord the king be so minded, let him signify unto us thereof. Then commanded King Darius to seek among the records of Babylon, and so at Ecbatana the palace, which is in the country of Media, there was found a roll wherein these things were recorded. In the first year of the reign of Cyrus, King Cyrus commanded that the house of the Lord at Jerusalem should be built again, ready to sacrifice with continual fire, whose height shall be sixty cubits, and the breadth sixty cubits, with three rows of hewn stones, and one row of new wood of that country, and the expenses thereof to be given out of the house of King Cyrus. And the holy vessels of the house of the Lord, both of gold and silver, that Nebuchadnezzar took out of the house at Jerusalem, and bought to Babylon, should be restored to the house at Jerusalem, and be set in the place where they were before. And he also commanded that Sisinnes, the governor of Syria and Phoenice, and Sastrobuzanes, and their companions, and those which were appointed rulers in Syria and Phoenice, should be careful not to meddle with the place, but suffer Zorobabel, the servant of the Lord, and governor of Judea, and the elders of the Jews, to build the house of the Lord in that place. I have commanded also to have it built up whole again, and that they look diligently to help those that be of the captivity of the Jews, till the house of the Lord be finished. And out of the tribute of Stella Syria and Phoenice, a portion carefully to be given these men for the sacrifice of the Lord, that is to Zorobabel the governor, for bullocks and rams and lambs, and also corn, salt, wine, and oil, and that continually every year, without further question, according as the priests that be in Jerusalem shall signify to be daily spent that offerings may be made to the Most High God for the king and for his children, and that they may pray for their lives. And he commanded that whosoever should transgress, yea, or make light of anything before spoken or written, out of his own house should a tree be taken, and he thereon be hanged, and all his good cease for the king. The Lord, therefore, whose name is there called upon, utterly destroy every king and nation, that stretcheth out his hand to hinder or undamage the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. I, Darius the king, have ordained that according unto these things it be done with diligence.